800 miles longer than the Tour de France, voted the world's toughest event, clearly the planet's most grueling bike race. 14 states and four time zones, pedaling day and night, through the desert, over the mountains, and across America's heartland. From San Diego, California, to the world-famous boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. 18 solo riders, 11 teams, 2,922 miles, eight plus days and nights, 85,000 plus vertical feet. The 22nd inside race across America, next on OLF. Thanks. We'll see you out there. 7.58 a.m. Harbor Drive, San Diego, just minutes before the start of the 22nd race across America. The riders, teams, and fans assembled for an unparalleled odyssey of ultra cycling. 2,922 miles to Atlantic City, New Jersey. Among the favorites, seven-time rider Fabio Biasiolo from Italy and 17-time finisher Rob Gish from Florida. Also, a trio of Slovenians. From Washington State, number 190, Alan Larson. Three, two, one. 8 a.m. and the 2003 race across America is underway. Led by one of the many teams that will start a day later, 18 soloists parade onto Harbor Drive, San Diego. They'll spend the next 20 miles in and around the San Diego area before hitting the open road. Let's meet some of the favorites. And my name is Alan Larson. I'm 37 years old. I'm from Cleveland, Washington. This is my second Ram. Last year was my rookie year and therefore my best finish. I was rookie of the year, Ian Sonbach Inspirational Award winner, winner premium in Mississippi. And I'm doing Ram this year again because I was not happy with that. I wanted to win. And uh, it's a very difficult race to win in your rookie year. And we learned a lot last year. So I'm back to see if I can take that knowledge and a bit more stringent training program and turn it into a victory. I'll be disappointed if I don't win, but uh, I'd be more disappointed if I just didn't turn in my best performance. My name is Marko Baloch. I'm 36 years old. Uh, I come from Slovenia, capital city of Slovenia, Ljubljana. This is my first RAM. I'm a rookie. Why RAM? Um, I don't know, I've heard of Rem, I don't know, 15 years ago maybe. I think I saw it on TV, Spielauer's documentary of his victory. And I think I was cooked uh, from then on. Uh, I, I think I'm fascinated by the race, so I, I really want to, to know how, how can I do in it. That's, that's my motivation. Morning, gentlemen. Rob Kish, 48 years old from Port Orange, Florida, and this will be my 18th attempt to cross country as part of RAM. And people ask me why I do it anymore, and anymore the only answer I have is that it's a habit. I've been doing it for so long. It'll be a big life change when I quit doing it. No strategy except to just ride all the time as much as you can. And. Uh, it's all the same. You just try to get in a mood to where you keep moving at a good pace. My name is Valsesia Dino Nico. I'm uh, Italian. My name is Nico Valsesia. I'm coming from Borgo Menero. This is a small town in North Italy. I'm 32 years old and it's the first run I participate. And well, the reason because I do the run is because it was a dream since I was a kid and I've always pursued this, uh, this dream and it's something I'm really willing to do. It's very important to me. My name is uh, Yuri Robic. Uh, I'm uh, 38 uh, years old. I'm coming uh, from uh, Slovenia, from Europe, uh, from Mistenice. 
the city. Um, this is my first uh, first attempt in the race across America race, and uh, why I'm doing this? Uh, I know it's it's the hardest it's the hardest event in the world, and um, it's my uh, it's my life goal to 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 win the race. I do, I do, I'm just riding, you know, my tempo, and I hope I will uh, continue in. Uh, in this kind of uh, riding with no problems. Well, John Howard says you're pretty tough. <laughs> it's a long way to go. Yeah, we'll see. The officials for the Race Across America primarily are looking to, to make sure that we have a fair and consistent race for all competitors and also safety. A lot of the rules and regulations that we're enforcing have to do with the safety of the race. That's our first priority. The other thing is to make sure everybody is, is fair, the competition is fair, everybody's on the route, everybody's stopping at stop signs, following the rules of the road, all those types of things too. Six hours and 105 miles in, Slovenian rookie Yuri Rovic has a slim three minute lead over a trio of riders. The 2003 Insight Race Across America is being brought to you by Insight. The IT products you want, the services you need, the prices you'll like. Insight, whatever it takes. By Atlantic City Convention and Visitors Authority. Make your next vacation Atlantic City, New Jersey. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Is it in you? By ECAPS Endurance Supplements and Hammer Gel. Serious products for serious endurance athletes. And by Delorme. We bring technology down to earth. Imperial Sand Dunes, California, 115 degree heat, 157 miles in, rookie Marco Ballo leads. The longest race I did for now was 48 hours. It was no problem for me, neither mentally or physically, so this is a new territory for me. It's something that every rookie goes through, and uh, I, hope, I hope that I won't have problems. I'm not so uh, afraid of uh, of heat and uh, of uh, geography. You know, uh, what I'm afraid of is uh, injuries. You know, uh, of my backside. You know, my uh, my ass and uh, my fingers. And because I have now some experience in 24 hours race, and uh, uh, I can say uh, it was difficult with my ass all every every race. That's most I'm afraid of. Uh, I'm not afraid of heat and uh, the lengths and, and no. I'm prepared well, physically and mentally, and I'm not afraid of, of nothing. 4.46 p.m., Alan Larson about to pass the stop Robich into second place. I think the toughest obstacle this year is going to be day one. Uh, I don't live in a very hot climate, and we're expecting temperatures to get into the hundreds, possibly teens. And uh, that's going to be a challenge. I've been doing as much as I can, finding some heat exposure to prepare me for that, and I've been doing fine. But I think just kind of getting back on that groove, back in the, the saddle to where, like last year in Ram, you kind of get to this point where you just go. It actually feels better to be on the bike than when you stop. When you stop and you get back on the bike, you feel worse than if you would have just stayed on. And now that I know that, my plan is just stay on the bike. Five p.m. local time. We're with Rob Kish at Imperial Sand Dunes. And he's in fourth place. Different people approach it at different ways. And uh, so now I know what you feel like unless you've done it at all, you really don't know how well you're going to do. So someone could show up and be pretty good at it. But usually, usually you have to have done it one time, and then the second time you, you can have a real good chance of winning. Uh, very seldom does a rookie have a good chance of winning because they've just never been out there. We're with Dino at Imperial Sand Dunes. How's the heat treating you? He's a too hot. 
In sixth place, Keith Cromwell, followed closely by Lichtenstein's Marcel Canal. My name is Ishmak and uh, I'm 45 years old. Um, I'm living right now in Antioch, California and uh, my only previous RAM experience was a DNF last year and uh, basically uh, I want to for an accomplishment or why am I doing this, it's more along the lines of, of just uh, meeting personal demons, just trying to, uh, to finish something that uh, I've started and worked so hard to try and get. Um, and, you know, there's, there's no uh, pat answer as to, you know, I, I don't want to finish first. There's one adversary this year, and this is the only adversary that's ever beaten me, and that's the course, and, uh, and that's what I would like to beat this year. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. The leaderboard into time station number three. Rookie Marco Ballo, a seven minute gap over Alan Larson. Yuri Robich is third, followed by 18 year veteran and Ram legend Rob Kish. Eight oh one p.m. Time station number four. Leader Marco Ballo has stopped to regroup after two hundred twenty miles of riding. Okay, probably more. I have to wait for my crew. I understand they're getting gas. Yeah, <laughs> they're a bit slower than what, I am. What did you stop for? Uh, I changed my clothes. Ah, I have to uh, watch out. Uh, getting saddle sores now. I understand. Hygiene is important here. You stop because of Here we go. Right here. Eight oh eight p.m. Rob Kish passes the stop Bala in the first place. 220 miles over mountains and through 115 degree heat brings our first riders to the California-Arizona border. Already 55 miles separate first from last. The race also claims its first victim. Freddy Varog pulls out due to dehydration in the afternoon desert heat. Uh, doctor tell, uh, told me uh, I, I I, I didn't enough uh, drink mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my body is dehydration and uh, then my crew uh, take me uh, in medical and uh, I was here about five years, missing five uh, hours mm -hmm. and next year, <laughs> next year again. 8.09 p.m. Yuri Robich rolls into time station number four and momentarily secures second place, passing Balo before stopping. One minute later, Balo sets out in second place to chase down Kish. Yeah, he's leaving. Balo left two minutes after Kish. Who? Balo, he left two minutes yeah. after Kish. Yeah. Who uh, is now in the third place? And the fourth? <sighs> 8 40 p.m. Under the cover of darkness, Marco Ballo passes Rob Kish and regains first place at the California-Arizona border. 8.52, Alan Larson passes Robich into third, 22 minutes behind Ballo. In second place, the steady veteran Rob Kish. He's chasing Ballo into the first sleepless night of Race Across America. Eight fifteen a.m., day number two of the Insight Race Across America. Alan Larson has made a major move overnight, covering three hundred ninety-three miles in his first twenty-four hours. He takes the race lead, a remarkable sixteen and a half mile per hour clip. He now holds a nearly one-hour margin over second-place rider Marco Ballo of Slovenia. In third, after a fifteen-minute loss to find a connecting highway. Rob Kish now almost two hours behind Larson. Behind Kish, a close-knit battle for fourth between Mark Patton 
and Marcel Canaus. In sixth place, seven-year starter, three-time finisher, Fabio Biasiolo from Italy. The experienced Italian with a slight edge over Ram rookie, Yuri Robic. In eighth place, battling traffic near time station number seven in Prescott, Arizona, another Ram rookie, Martin Lawrence. In ninth place, Keith Cromwell, a 48-year-old rocket scientist from Alexandria, Virginia. Five miles behind Cromwell, in 12th, Dino Nico Valsesi. In 13th, the lone female soloist, 53-year-old Rebecca Smith from Portland, Oregon. Stop for shade and rest in 14, Benny Fuhrer, the one on the right. In 16th place, Hungary's Attila Cohen. And in 17th, Paul Bonds writing for his departed daughter Jennifer, killed while standing by his side at a dangerous intersection in his hometown. 12.59 p.m., San Diego, California. 11 teams ready for their bid to race across America. Our goal is to finish in five and a half days. Uh, last time we, we uh, finished in six days and one hour. So uh, with you know 20,000 feet less climbing and hopefully some tailwinds, we can hit that mark. The current wheelmen have the record, and I would love to make an attempt at it. You know, we're really going to try to gun for it, but it's, I think the weather is such a big variable that uh, you know if all the cards come together, we'd have a shot at it. But if there's crosswinds or headwinds, there's no way. It's an exciting adventure for all of us. Uh, we all are full-time employees of Insight, uh, which was voted one of the coolest companies to work for. And uh, I think the fact that they are supporting on this endeavor is absolutely indicative of, uh, of, of that statement. So uh, we're excited about uh, representing the company. We're excited about embarking on such an incredible event and racing from San Diego to uh, Atlantic City. So uh, we're, we're absolutely fired up. Go, baby, go. I got you. I think strategy is key. This is much more of a team event than personal endurance. Um, your organization, the way that we work together as a team, may be the reason that we'll win this event. I, I heard about it when it first started, and I just thought it was an amazing accomplishment and feat, and those guys kind of impressed me on what they could do. So. I said, someday I'm going to have to try that. And Byron gave me a call and said, today's the day. To me, it's kind of the ultimate challenge because I think it's, it adds uh, several things together. It adds endurance. Um, and I think going across the country on a bicycle um, is a tremendous feat, I think, no matter how you do it. <clears throat> I think for us on a four-man team, the speed and the intensity is going to be uh, it basically is as high as we can keep it for that amount of time. So I think it, uh, it's kind of an ultimate race for me. We're looking for the finish in um, five or six days and our team, we, are, uh, we have been our team specialists for, for the flat terrain, for, for the climbings and, and I think that's, that's the reason why we can win this race. I think it's it's just difficult in the days in the middle, you know, to start. Every everything is very impressive and then a little bit nervous and, and everything is new. And at the end you, you can see the finish, you know, just in your head you have okay just thousand kilometers. But right in between I guess there is is is, is the difficult part of the race. The third day, fourth day, I guess that's really, really hard. The leaderboard after 36 hours in the 2003 Insight Race Across America. Alan Larson out front by nearly two and a half hours. In second, the rookie Marco Ballo. In third, Ram legend Rob Kish. In the team division, Team Vale go fast on an early record pace, followed by the Austrian contingent, Team Hirather. 
near Springerville, New Mexico. Alan Larson, also on a record pace, sprints into Time Station 12, still unable to sleep after 40 straight hours on his bike. It's definitely still early in the race, but uh, all the preparation leading up to this, you know, that anxiety is going to be behind me, and I'll be in ram mode, if you want to call it that. So I think that basically that just that first, that first period of time on the bike before my first sleep break will, will basically, things will be falling into place. I'm not going to fall asleep right now. Okay. Okay. Still am You're How mental, long has it been? mentally coherent. And You've been on a yeah. long time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. What are you gonna do? Okay. It's going I on. I can't sleep. I just know I'm going to lay there. I don't want to go till I have to be peeled off the bike. to avoid the heat. They did a good job. 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, day three of the 2003 InSight Race Across America. Team Bale go fast on a rider exchange nearing time station number 11 in Sholo, Arizona. They've been riding for 28 and a half hours at an average team speed of just over 20 miles per hour. Within an hour, they'll catch the last place soloist, Benny Fuhrer somewhere near the Arizona New Mexico border. Race across America, rivers crushed. For ultra cyclist like me, is it the biggest thing to do one time to race across America. When you have do, done this, you can do after them everything that you want. With an average gain of seven miles per hour while the soloists are awake and 21 miles per hour while they're sleeping, the first place team will take at least two full days to go from the last place soloist to the first. We're prepared to, to finish any way that we need to. You know, we've talked this through, and in order to win the race, we have to get there safely. So safety is our first concern to not injure ourselves. And, uh, you know, and barring that, we had some sickness and some stuff like that last time we did it. And there was some, a lot of afternoons or a lot of big periods of time when we didn't have all four of our riders. So. We're ready to roll with the punches and, and get there. You know, we just need one person and one vehicle to get to the finish, but uh, we plan on being safe and getting us all there at the same time. The Pass of Fuhrer would be the last time we see Team Vale. Late in the night near Pytown, New Mexico, while making an exchange, team rider Brett Mullen would be struck and killed by a semi-tractor trailer. The fatality was the first ever for Race Across America. Brett Mullen was 30 years old. Eleven forty-three a.m. Central Time, day four in the twenty-first Insight Race Across America. Alan Larson wheels into Guyman, Oklahoma, with an amazing eleven-plus-hour lead on veterans Rob Kish and Fabio Biasiello and rookie Marco Ballo. Larson's total miles one thousand one hundred seventy-five, just over one-third of the way to the famous boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. In the team division, Howarth are on top with a three-hour gap on Erite Racing. Three and a half over eight person team in sight. Despite the lead, Larson now two hours behind the record pace set by Pete Panzeer, 15.4 miles per hour, set in 1986. 13.45. Uh, 13.45? Yes. So I'm behind by two hours from where they said that? Yes. Yeah. Well, what do they know? <laughs> yeah, well, Behind Larson, 
the field continues to spread out. A jubilant Fabio Biasiolo reacts as he crosses the Texas state line in second place. Less than an hour behind Fabio, Ram legend Rob Kish and the race rookie Marco Ballo duel for third and fourth in the hills of eastern New Mexico. You know, a lot of times when you pass people, the, they can just pass you back later because of the ups and downs of your speed and your mood and, uh, you know, how well you're functioning. Up, 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 oh, 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 oh. Go on, Slovenia. After a short break, Larson is back on the bike and heading towards Kansas. In fifth place, the other Slovenian rookie, Yuri Rovic. My goal is to win, yeah. Maybe I'm not able, to, I mean, maybe it's not realistic, you know, but my goal is to win. And uh, I, I'm, I'm doing this, I, I'm going to do everything to, to, to win. And if I'm not winning, yeah, I'm, I'm doing 100%, you know. And maybe next year then, you know, have experience and, yeah. I got no mechanic, I got no masseuse. I got, I got people who give two weeks of their lives to come help me out. That's what I have. That's, you know, it's about as specialized as I have. And then uh, that road, that first off, that, that, the worst road in Ram, they said, bent these aero bars. And I noticed that uh, my shoulder was starting to hurt. In seventh place, veteran Mark Patton, who has yet to sleep, bowed. Still behind the top seven soloists, but gaining ground quickly, Team Herod. The leaderboard, Larson in first, 168 miles and 12 hours ahead of Kish. Fabio now in third place. One and a half hours behind Kish, three and a half hours ahead of Rovich. In the team race division, Herrether racing strong, nearly 200 miles ahead of second place Team Eritre. Seven forty-five a.m. Central Time, Day Five. Team Harrether crosses the Missouri River just outside Jefferson City, the Missouri State Capital, and after two solid days of riding, from last soloist to first, finally approaches the position of Ram leader Alan Larson. Amazed that it has taken three and a half full days of riding to catch up to the soloist. Fine, because we are waiting. We couldn't believe that he is so good and that we needed so long. Five miles outside the capital, the lead team comes upon Larson's crew in a parking lot on the side of the road. Larson is taking a three-hour sleep break in his RV. Team Harrether, with the pass, is finally the overall race leader. Five hours earlier, in the dark of the night, Larson shows his first signs of weakening when his yeah, neck gives out for the second year in a row, I mean, and he's fitted with a brace to hold his head up. What's the matter how strong your legs are if your neck can't hold your head up? You use something to hold it up with. Three teams remain in the chase to catch Herrether, including Erite Racing. In the eight-person corporate challenge, race sponsor Team Insight makes a rider exchange in the hills of Missouri, up an hour and a half over Team Ride to Remember, third overall behind Herrether and Erite. Although we're a team of eight, we're gonna treat it as two separate teams of four. Uh, the team of four will be on for an eight-hour shift, and then we'll rotate, whether it be an hour-long shift or half hour, really be dependent upon the type of terrain we're facing. Uh, there's 83,000 vertical feet of climbing, so we've got to make sure that we're breaking up the climbing and not sticking one person with the responsibility of handling all that. Physically, we're doing great. I think mentally, we're doing fantastic also. Whatever it takes. Despite the next setback, Larson loses no ground to Kish in the field averaging 370 miles a day. In the team event, 
power through in a six hour gap over Arrington and Green. We're definitely chasing the eight man and, and all male teams in front of us. It's kind of a challenge to the women on the team. And uh, we'd like to beat them just because it gives us something to shoot for. And here's what all the riders in the 2003 race across America are shooting for, the world famous boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, the world's first and most famous boardwalk. For nearly 150 years, visitors from all over the world have come to Atlantic City for fun in the sun on Atlantic City's four miles of luscious white sandy beaches and the soothing clay-filled Atlantic Ocean. More than 33 million people annually visit Atlantic City, making it one of the most popular destinations in the United States. Atlantic City's five-mile boardwalk is just one attraction. It's lined with amusement, world-famous casinos, restaurants, and shops. Atlantic City is also home to the Atlantic City Convention Center, site of the annual Miss America pageant. If adult amusements are what you're looking for, step inside for the fast-paced action in the casinos, offering a myriad of card games, slot machines, high gal poker, roulette, and craps. And there's no shortage of pampering here with some of the area's finest bars. Atlantic City, New Jersey, America's favorite playground and the final destination of the Race Across America 2003. For more information, check the Atlantic City website. With neck brace in place, Alan Larson up again in riding. Just ahead, the Mississippi River and the final one-third of the 2003 ramp. Now we've uh, got all the adjustments to this uh, medieval torture device taken care of. And uh, I'm just going to sit here and cruise through the night, recover, watch my nutrition, keep on a moving, and store up hopefully some uh, steam for the mountains in West Virginia. 900 miles to go, but as all the veteran riders will tell you, the Mississippi is where the real race begins. 6.55 a.m., day six of the 2003 Insight Race Across America. Team FOI, fourth among the four-person men's teams, charges forward to Atlantic City. Their quest now just to finish. FOI's bid to win eliminated hours earlier when Austrian Team Harrether arrived at Time Station 55, the world-famous Atlantic City boardwalk. 10.13 p.m. Six days, six hours, 13 minutes after setting out from San Diego. Team Harrether wins the four-person team competition. How are you feeling, my friend? Uh, we're all feeling great. I mean, we're here where we want to be, and the dream come true, so we must feel good. How, how did America look? America, again, is very fast, very dark, but do you get a sense of how big, how big this country is? How fast? How did you feel? Uh, I think it's uh, from the one point to the other exactly 5,000 kilometers, is that right? <laughs> That's how big it is, all right. How are you feeling, my friend? A little bit tired. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here they are. First place, four-person men's division, Team Herrether from Austria. So Team Herrether wins the four-person team division with an outstanding performance. Four other teams battle neck and neck in Pennsylvania. The leaderboard, Harrether in first, Team Arite five hours, 100 miles behind. Third overall, the eight-person corporate team Insight. In fourth, Team Hybrid Charge. In the solo division, Alan Larson continues to dominate with just 473 miles to go. His lead now over 150 miles, 12 and a half hours ahead of Rob Kish. But Larson and Kish both know anything can happen in rain. There have been a lot of races where I've been, you know, at the back for a long time or towards the back, and, you know, I just start picking people off one at a time. In that case, you know, usually once I go by them, I never see them again. I think you got some time to play with. You're, to me, you're, you look a little bloodshot. You're, your eye, eyes are drooping like you're not far from being to that tired, delirious state. And I'm thinking that... Well, I wonder why. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not wondering why. I'm good. Yeah, but I'm thinking that it might be a good time. When he woke up this morning, his eyes looked fresh. And was ready right, they look really good. I'm thinking that I'd like Never to... Never knew what three hours of sleep would do. I think you should go down for an hour, an hour and a half. I think I'd wake up and ride better. I think you would too. 
a lot better, you feel better, and enjoy the ride more. I don't need to worry about anybody, so. 4.15 p.m. Rob Kish battles traffic just short of Time Station 40 in Troy, Ohio. Behind him, Yuri Robic, refreshed from a three-hour sleep break, picks up the pace for a possible late charge. Now in fourth, Lichtenstein's Marcel Knaus, two hours behind Robic. In fifth place, Rick Asherbrenner, who's made a three-day move from 13th to his current standing. In the two-person team division, a hotly contested battle between Reaper Goodman and Epic what Racing Team. A two-hour lead over your competition. We had about a six. Our crew chief put us down. We're supposed to get one on the road, and he didn't. We lost a half of our 80-mile lead on that. Seven o three a.m. Arite Racing's four-person crew reaches Atlantic City nine hours after Team Howarther. Total time, six days, 15 hours, three minutes. One hour, 30 minutes behind Arite, Team Hydra Charge claims the four-person mixed team division. For the soloists, Larson's still with a large gap. It's beginning to look like the battle will be for second. A moment of joy among the misery for writer Rick Asher Brennan. Just two miles from his hometown, he's greeted by his parents, sister, and nephew along the road. You're gonna make it, I know you're gonna make it. Nick's on the phone, you went to oh, you keep going, fella. It's a race, gotta go. He's gonna go, he's gonna go. Okay, well, uh, all right, we're doing it to it. We're taking good care of him. I know you are, Thomas. Okay, let's go. Number one crew. Yes, yes. crew. Hey, Brendan. Gotta go. The brief stop does cost him some precious minutes. Quickly closing the gap, Italian rookie Dino Nico Valsacia. Behind him, Terry Lansdale. It's a tough day, living by the numbers today. Got to do so many miles today. Doesn't matter how it hurts or anything. Got to get the miles done today. Oh, man. Everything hurts. But it hurts better because I'm in first place. That makes it that makes it feel just a little bit a little bit better. Okay, let's Ready? Oh, yeah, yeah. How can I walk out? Oh, if you more sudden than you have to. Watch, he's got his luck. He's gonna put the light on later. Yeah, we just need a headlight. He shouldn't need any cooling bottles, so we'll keep him light. Looks like we got it. Back on the road, Larson makes his final push to Atlantic City. Just 473 miles to go. Nine thirty-two a.m. Team Insight arrives in Atlantic City, claiming the eight-person corporate crowd. Tim Baker, Richard Daggett, Jeff Easter, Chris Heath, Trish O'Keefe, John Olson, Peter Reblitz, Nardo, J.B. Rodriguez. Team Inside! Woo! Yeah! So while two of the three team challenges have been decided, one still rages on, as well as the war that continues in the solo race. I just want to get there. You think you need to take a sleep break tonight? I am extremely hoping not. I don't even know how far I have to go or what time it is. I'm just pedaling. Behind the solo leader, two two-person teams trade places in Pennsylvania. Oh, uh, my buddy Byron, he just went out and went for it. He wants it. How did those guys get you? Did you look at him?
Day 8, 9.42 a.m. An expectant crowd waits with anticipation for lead solo rider Alan Larson. 2,922 miles. Alan Larson! He's here! He made it! It's all him. It's not me. There have been many fantastic champions in Rams history, but no man combines the values of family, of faith, of compassion and strength than this man. Excuse my emotion, but what this man has been through and what he sacrifices and for what this, what this race has been through this year, I want to congratulate you, Alan Larson. You're a champion of Race Across America. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I uh, was out there thinking, you know, what are you going to say? And um, I have to thank a number of people. First and foremost, my Savior, Jesus Christ. Without him, I can do nothing. In him, through his strength, I can endure. Um, my wife and kids, who I miss so much, thank you for the sacrifices you made. And last but not least, a crew of 10 people who you think Ram is hard, try crewing for Ram for me sometime. Eleven ten p.m. Yuri Robic now in second place with an amazing 400 mile move, pursuing, catching, and passing a surprised Rob Kish. Good speed. Stay right there. Stay right there. 1254 a.m. Robic arrives on the boardwalk to claim second place in the prestigious Rookie of the Year award. I feel fantastic too, uh, because in so big, so tough race, uh, being top three, it's uh, it's for me like uh, planning in the, to, to the on the line, you know. And uh, I'm really happy that I made it. Is it like a dream come true? Yeah, it's like a dream come true. 2:35 a.m. Rob Kish finishes third for the third time to go with six second place finishes and three wins in 18 career ranks. Yeah, the only reason that uh, third doesn't feel as bad as it should is because I wasn't in first anyhow. It pretty much sucked. But you <laughs> Going down third. There you go. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three. This is a great event, and we're doing what Atlantic City does best, and that's host something for people to enjoy on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. The Race Across America started in San Diego and finished a week later in Atlantic City, brought wonderful weather with them, and we're having a great time. And I will say that they've been an inspiration to everybody who's been out here. The determination and the support that these riders have had across the country has really been terrific. Rick Ashebrenner for sixth place in the solo division, all the way from Italy. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Dino Nico Balsacia. Woohoo! Here he is, Terry Lansdale. Terry Lansdale, yeah. He's made it, folks! Seven place in the Race Across America! The final leaderboard in the 2003 Insight Race Across America. Alan Larson, the winner, the 13th man to win Ram, and the 15th man to go under nine days on a solo transcontinental crossing by an individual on a bicycle. In the team division, congratulations goes out to the Austrians, Team Hyderabad. The 2003 Insight Race Across America on Outdoor Life Network has been brought to you by Insight. Insight, whatever it takes.
by the Atlantic City Convention and Visitors Authority. Make your next visit Atlantic City. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Is it in you? By DeLorme. We bring technology down to earth. And by ECAPS Endurance Supplements and Hammer Gel. Serious products for serious endurance athletes. And by Racer Made by CompuTrainer. That'll do it for the 2003 Inside Race Across America. Once again, congratulations to our champion, Alan Larson, and to all the riders who participated in the solo and team divisions in 2003. We'll see you next time right here on Outdoor Life Network for the 2004 Race Across America.